So what's up with you and Steve, man? I ain't nothing, I ain't nothing with me. He's, well, Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a b on that. Bullshit talk show he had. And he did, he, he did all my Halloween material, one Halloween. I'm watching, uh, uh, somebody called me and said, man, homeboy doing your material. So he did my whole Halloween run. Halloween was a trip, Halloween. We couldn't afford no Halloween costumes. Hey, kids, please. Mama sent us down to the liquor store, put boxes on us. We didn't know what we were. I don't know what we are. I think we UPS, I guess, I don't know. You've heard me say that every Halloween, I had the same outfit on, every year. Sad or just not ask my father, could I have a new outfit? And he said, no, just wear the same one. And it was just a brown box. And he just told me to tell everybody I was a UPS man. So it turns out Steve Harvey's journey into the limelight wasn't as natural as we thought. Ever wondered how many comedians are as big as him? Not many, right? That's why Steve's still a big deal. But here's the twist. His success is only part of why people can't stop talking about him. There's this whole dislike vibe from folks in and out of the industry, and guess who's seemingly stirring the pot? Yep, none other than Mark Curry. Word on the street is that Mark's gearing up to spill the beans on Steve, calling him the biggest rat in Hollywood. Steve's facing accusations that don't quite fit the image of a global patriarch. Some say his rise to the top isn't as straightforward as it seems, with rumors of him swiping material from other comedians, including Mark Curry. Looks like Mark's had enough and is about to drop some serious receipts on all of this drama. Mark's supposed evidence suggests that Steve's been up to some questionable stuff for a long time, even screwing over people he used to call his industry brothers. We're peeling back the curtain on the real Steve Harvey, according to those who've had first-hand interactions like Mark Curry. Quick heads up, if you are a Steve Harvey superfan, get ready for a reality check because this guy might not be the hero you thought. So grab your popcorn, we're diving deep into the nitty gritty details. So here's the scoop. Comedians really don't like it when someone swipes their jokes. And guess who's gotten on the wrong side of quite a few funny folks? Yep, our man Steve Harvey. In the wild world of showbiz, especially comedy, things can get messy real quick. Celebs borrowing each other's art, or in this case, straight up stealing jokes, it's like a comedy minefield. Mark Curry is making some noise, putting Steve Harvey on blast for allegedly lifting his material on a very public stage. Mark Curry, the comic who rocked the industry early on, is pointing fingers at Steve Harvey, claiming Harvey's not the stand-up guy his brand makes him out to be. According to Curry's spill, Steve Harvey's comedy success might not have been as smooth as he led us to believe. It's like he's saying, hey, those things that made you love Steve Harvey might not have all come from the man himself. All right, so in the entertainment biz, things can get a bit fuzzy, right? I mean, allegations and drama are practically part of the package. But here's the thing, Steve Harvey isn't exactly new to this whole mess. Over the years, he's found himself in a tangle of similar problems. Now add Mark Curry's recent claims to the mix, and it's like, hold up, is Steve Harvey not the flaw Flawless life coach we all thought he was, we might be on the brink of uncovering a slice of his success story that didn't quite make it into his best-selling book. Normally, when someone's throwing accusations around, it's because they're not exactly sitting on top of the success mountain, right? Well, that's not the case with Mark Curry, and that's what's keeping this whole Steve Harvey drama in the headlines. It's not your typical scenario. Mark Curry is not your average accuser. Back in the 90s, when becoming a star was like hitting the jackpot, Mark was living the dream, started in stand-up, globe-trotted, packed out comedy spots, the whole nine yards. Now, he has taken aim at some big shots in the entertainment game, calling them out as nothing but joke-stealing frauds. And guess who's in the spotlight first? Steve Harvey. So, in a couple of recent chats, Mark spilled the beans, claiming that Steve Harvey straight up recycled his material for jokes on his shows. And this isn't a new beef. Mark's been throwing shade about Steve, lifting his jokes way back when on Harvey's NBC talk show. I think what Steve Harvey was is that he used his, my material on both his platforms. Yeah. After I talked to him, I saw him at Def Jam, I went up and talked to him, I said, man, you're using my material. All right, so there's this explosive video, and it's got Steve Harvey and Mark Curry tangled up in some serious comedy. Mark's claiming that Steve, who used to host Little Big Shots on NBC, swiped not one, but two of his jokes. And get this, Mark says he already confronted Steve about it in the past, but the alleged joke thievery kept happening. Mark Curry says that you're still stealing his jokes. Hey man, listen to me. Yeah. Now this, I'm getting sick of this right here. Yeah. Mark Curry need to grow up. Now Mark, who's 62, spilled the tea to TMZ, saying that Steve jacked his Halloween bit, a personal story about growing up. 
but Steve wasn't having any of it. He straight up denied the accusations, saying Mark couldn't even name the supposedly stolen joke. Things got heated real quick with Steve telling Mark to get a life and get a career. Steve went on a rant, saying he hasn't stolen a joke in 35 years and dared Mark to name the joke he's talking about. He even threw in a grow up man for good measure. But here's the kicker, Mark wasn't just making stuff up. The comedian came armed with receipts, proving his point and turning up the heat in this comedy feud. Mark Curry took his beef with Steve Harvey to Instagram and dropped some serious receipts in a video that's now deleted. Basically, he called out Steve for allegedly stealing a bunch of jokes from him for his show. In this video, Mark compared an episode from his 90s sitcom, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, where he talked about rocking a brown box as a UPS costume for Halloween. Surprise, surprise, Steve made the exact same joke in a 2015 episode of his show. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. And here's the kicker, other comedians like Cat Williams jumped in and had Mark's back. In a recent interview, Cat even called out Steve Harvey for supposedly swiping material from Mark Curry. Now Mark Curry isn't the only comedian who's had a run-in with Steve Harvey. What's interesting is that Steve started out with a crew, doing the whole comedy thing and making people laugh on stage. But then, he went solo and became this huge sensation with various TV shows. The catch? Along the way, it seems like he might have stepped on a few toes, including those of his comedy comrades. And we're not just talking about any group here. It's the original Kings of Comedy, featuring legends like Bernie Mac. Now, if you were around for some good laughs in the early 2000s, you probably caught wind of the original Kings of Comedy show. But if you weren't, let me tell you, whatever you think you know about Steve Harvey's story might just be the tip of the iceberg. There's more to this comedy tale than meets the eye. All right, so let me take you back two decades when Steve Harvey and his crew rocked the comedy world with the original Kings of Comedy tour, earning themselves a solid spot in the Comedy Hall of Fame. It was a game changer, breaking records and basically shaping the comedy scene we know today. The the squad included D.L. Hewley, Cedric the Entertainer, and the one and only Bernie Mac. Each had their own style, diving into African-American life and those black-white differences. Now Bernie Mac was the laugh riot of the bunch, delivering that hard-edged humor. Steve Harvey, on the other hand, went all in, getting aggressive with the audience, roasting folks in the front row about their hair, clothes, and career choices. But here's the twist. Even though Bernie was killing it, Steve closed the show. Now, the plot thickens. It seems Steve might have been a tad jealous of Bernie's approach. Even Steve admitted he felt a bit threatened by Bernie Mac, sparking some that lasted for years. At least that's the latest scoop from one of the band members spilling the beans to the world. Back in the days of the original Kings of Comedy tour, there were whispers about some tension between Steve Harvey and the late Bernie Mac. Now the cat's out of the bag and Cedric the Entertainer, who was part of the crew along with D.L. Hewley, has spilled the beans. It's the same that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. When he got Ocean's Eleven, Steve had reached out to the producer and said he thought he would be a better fit and tried to get the part and blah, blah, blah. And that was some Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac? Yeah, they weren't exactly best buds. Back in 2003, Bernie Mac told GQ magazine that Harvey was giving off some jealous vibes and trying to mess with his chances at landing certain movie roles. Steve opened up about the accusations in a 2010 interview, admitting he was hurt by Bernie's words. And here's the kicker. Other folks like Damon Williams and even Cat Williams have backed up Bernie claims. All right, let's rewind the clock to December 2008 when Steve Harvey and Cat Williams found themselves in the headlines. These two haven't exactly been best buds for over a decade, and there's a story behind it. So, Cat Williams decided to call out Steve Harvey right before a Christmas season show, and things got wild. Picture this, Jamie Foxx, who was a radio host at the time, throws shade into the mix by playing a clip of Williams dissing Steve Harvey. Cat, on the phone, goes on a rant saying, I want to apologize for what's gonna happen, hinting at their upcoming joint comedy gig. But here's the kicker. He drops the bomb, telling Steve that once he hits the stage, it's game over for him as the king of comedy. Steve Harvey then calls in, baffled by the whole situation. He tells Jamie and the crew, I've always been cool with Cat, explaining that back in LA, he didn't even know who Cat Williams was. Imagine that, Steve Harvey asking, whoever Cat Williams is, call me. So, Cat Williams didn't hold back in a recent interview, laying into Steve Harvey. Cat straight up called out Steve for supposedly being jealous of Bernie Mac, spilling the tea on their years-long 
According to Kat, Bernie felt Steve was trying to mess with his movie roles, even attempting to snatch a role in Ocean's Eleven, creating major tension. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. It's the same that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. Kat went on to claim that Steve, in an appearance on Club Shesh, tried to act all nonchalant about not wanting to be a movie star. But, according to Kat, Steve was secretly trying to compete with Bernie Mac for movie roles. And that's not all. Kat also accused Steve of stealing material from another comedian, Mark Curry, and allegedly lying about being homeless. In Kat's words, the same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he's the principal, wearing a suit and rocking a high top fade, making all black men think he's got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit, not the real deal. These are like, this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. Kat also called Steve out for supposedly lying about being homeless, saying, that's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. When Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They just tell the stories. Kat didn't stop there, diving into Steve's marital history, claiming Steve said it was his first wife who got him where he is, then switched it up with the next wife who thinks like a man. Kat questioned Steve's credibility and authenticity, especially when it comes to claiming to be the king of comedy. He even spilled that he was offered the chance to be the fourth king of comedy, but turned it down because of how Steve allegedly treated Bernie Mac. Kat said, because the whole time Bernie was here, you were acting like you were funnier than him. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all. Kat's not holding back, calling Steve out on his claims and keeping it real about how comedy works. All right, so Cat Williams isn't the only one who's had an on-air tiff with Steve Harvey. Recently, Monique turned the tables during her appearance on Steve's show, making it clear that she wasn't there just to be in the hot seat. Monique, with her comedic charm, took charge of the show and spilled some industry tea involving her and the host. She didn't hold back, revealing how she felt like she got thrown under the bus for speaking her truth. But it wasn't just Steve Harvey catching heat on air. Monique threw shade at a couple of other big names in the industry, mentioning folks like Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, and even her brother Steve. She made it clear she wasn't backing down and that she wasn't in the wrong. So, a while back on Steve's show, Monique dropped some truth bombs about her struggles in Hollywood. The Oscar winner revealed how she got labeled as difficult and blackballed in the industry because she dared to ask for more pay during the Oscar publicity campaign for Precious in 2009. She didn't hold back saying, I said no to some very powerful people. For context, back in 2009, Monique had a plan to do a press tour for the movie Precious, co-produced by Oprah and Tyler Perry. They wanted to ride the wave of her Oscar nomination buzz, but here's the her. They weren't planning to pay her for the tour, and she was already drained from filming. Monique decided to skip the tour and take a breather with her family. It seemed like a straightforward call, and everyone seemed cool with it. She said, Oprah, I'm doing a talk show, I'm doing a comedy tour, I have a husband, and I have babies, I have a little bit of downtime, and I am going to take advantage of it, so I'm not going anywhere because I'm not obligated to go anywhere. I've done my part. So, we mutually agreed to disagree. That was it. Next thing I know, I am considered difficult and hard to work with. Fast forward a few weeks and bam, media stories start popping up, painting Monique as difficult to work with. Suddenly, no one wanted to cast her despite her winning an Oscar for her role in Precious. Imagine seeing all your hard work go down the drain. Monique started putting two and two together, realizing someone was out to get her. In a recent chat with The Hollywood Reporter, she spilled the beans that Precious director Lee Daniels admitted she got blackballed for not playing the game. Monique's even called out Oprah and Tyler Perry, asking for an apology that, as far as we know, is still MIA. With it. She said, if you don't want me to have your brother on the show, I will cancel the show. No show will happen. But I wanted to call you up to see how you felt first. Now I began to see commercials with my brother, my mother, my father, and my other brother. A few months after the press tour mess, Monique spilled the beans on Comedy Central about how Oprah invited Monique's brother Gerald and her parents to her show. Here's the backstory. Monique's brother A.ed her when she was 7 to 11, and she had been open about it in a 2008 interview with Essence. Monique confided in Oprah about her strained relationship with her parents due to the abuse, and Oprah seemed understanding. Monique said she was cool with Oprah inviting Gerald, but didn't want to be part of it. Fast forward to the taping, and Monique was blindsided seeing commercials featuring her family. Oprah 
Oprah had gone back on her word, pretending to be caring. Monique demanded an apology, but Oprah offered zilch. No private, no public apology, nothing. In 2018, Monique stirred the pot again, proposing a Netflix boycott because they didn't offer her the same pay as other big-name comedians like Chris Rock and Amy Schumer for a stand-up special. And guess who she called out for not having her back? Yep, Steve Harvey. She confronted him about a comment he made, saying she had burned too many bridges, and she didn't hold back on how hurt she was. But surprise, surprise, Steve didn't seem to care much about Mo's feelings. It left a lot of people surprised because the Steve Harvey they saw on TV didn't match up with this real-life drama. And as it turns out, that was just the beginning, with Steve stirring up controversies one after another throughout his time in the limelight. So Steve Harvey's been basking in the limelight for ages, winning over not just co-workers and industry folks, but the whole public. He was the morning show guy, and even now, he's a face you'd recognize in almost any room. But turns out, the sweet image he puts on screen isn't the real deal. Behind the scenes, he's apparently quite a pain to work with, and folks have had enough. It's not just a little workplace annoyance either. Reports spill the beans on a memo Steve sent to his staffers that's made people see a whole different side of him. Let's just say the news about his work relationships is raising some eyebrows, and not in a good way. Sometimes it's better not to know the nitty-gritty details, and this might be one of those times. But hey, we're here to spill all the juicy details. So, Steve Harvey dropped a memo that pretty much shattered any niceness pretense, drawing a clear line between himself and his co-workers, making it seem like they were beneath him. In this memo, he straight up said, My security team will stop everyone from standing at my door who have the intent to see or speak to me. I want all the ambushing to stop now. He laid it out even for the TV staff, saying they must schedule an appointment and not even think about trying to chat with him in the hallway. No impromptu meetings, folks. It's all about appointments now. And get this, he warned them not to walk with him. Now, when this memo hit the headlines, did Steve apologize or try to smooth things over? Nope. Instead, he doubled down on his words. In response, he said, I could not find a way to walk from the stage to my dressing room, to sit in my makeup chair, to walk from my dressing room to the stage, or to just sit and have lunch without somebody just walking in. He justified the memo by claiming people were taking advantage of his open door policy. So there you have it. No apologies. Just a, you folks took advantage of my niceness vibe. Most people might want to find reason in Steve's perspective on this subject for not wanting to talk to the people he works with. But it's not like this is the first time he's been a bit of a jerk and expected everyone to just nod along. Despite his questionable takes and comedy leaning heavily on gender stereotypes, he likes to play the relationship expert, handing out advice left and right. But here's the kicker. His own love life is a hot mess. Steve is rocking his third marriage, and get this, his third wife was once the mistress to his second wife. Talk about tangled webs. And as if that weren't enough, he's allegedly been a repeat offender in the cheating department and guess what? He doesn't seem to see what the big deal is. Oh no, he tried to justify it, but here's the twist. According to Steve, men can cheat because there are plenty of women ready to jump into their arms. Yeah, it's as cringe-worthy as it sounds. If you connect the dots, it seems like Steve might be living by these very words, especially considering his history with marriages. All right, let's rewind to 1981 when Steve Harvey was still hustling to make a name for himself. He tied the knot with Marsha Harvey, but things took a rocky turn. As Steve worked on his comedy career, rumors flew about him cheating on Marsha and leaving her while she was expecting their third child. The couple eventually divorced in 1994. Marsha, however, kept things low-key and focused on her own life, even publishing a few books. Then, in 1996, Steve went down the aisle again, this time with Mary Shackelford, a makeup artist. The rumor mill hinted that their relationship might have started while Steve was still married to Marsha. Talk about a serial cheat. Steve and Mary's marriage lasted for nine years before they called it quits in 2006. Mary, usually tight-lipped, stumbled upon a private letter from Steve's mistress, causing quite the stir. She spilled the beans in a 2017 interview, claiming Steve cheated on her multiple times, even with his current wife, Marjorie. Noticing a pattern? Adding fuel to the fire, Mary accused Steve a physical A during their marriage, which Steve vehemently denied. In 2017, Mary leveled various accusations against the famous TV personality, including emotional distress caused by his interference in her custody dispute. She sought a hefty $60 million in damages, but the case was eventually tossed out. So, after Mary's accusations caused quite a stir, the media jumped on the bandwagon, stirring up a whole lot of trouble among Steve Harvey's fan base. People were split, some defended Harvey, questioning Mary's motives, while others Others were disappointed and even angry at the renowned TV host. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Steve Harvey himself addressed the charges, slamming the lawsuit as ridiculous and denying all the claims made against him. He went on to suggest that he believed the lawsuit was just a ploy to squeeze money out of him. They call her the green eye 
She's been seen everywhere with Steve. But hold on, the alleged cheating saga doesn't end there. Recently, Steve and his current wife, Marjorie Harvey, found themselves in the midst of another scandal. Podcaster Tasha Kay spilled the tea on Instagram, claiming that Steve was allegedly cheating on Marjorie with his private chef, the so-called green-eyed monster. This chef had been spotted everywhere with Steve, and Tasha accused him of being unfaithful in his marriage to Marjorie. Breaking away from years of keeping their relationship out of the gossip mill, Steve Harvey, the TV host and comedian, is now facing allegations of infidelity with his private chef. Tasha Kay spilled the beans on her podcast, Unwind with Tasha Kay, stating that she got wind of information about the 66-year-old entertainer and his beautiful private chef, who was allegedly hired as his vegan mistress. Now, you'd expect some sympathy for Marjorie as the apparent victim, but it seems the public isn't entirely convinced she's a saint herself. Over the years, rumors and allegations surrounding the couple have hinted that all might not be well. Sources even spilled details about Marjorie's less-than-savory past that surfaced several years ago, adding more fuel to the rumor mill. Backtracking a bit, sources spilled the beans on Marjorie's past a few years ago, with rumors resurfacing in 2017 that dubbed her Lady Heroin. The online nickname came from Marjorie's previous marriages to two d dealers, particularly the first, Jim Townsend, a reputed d lord in Memphis. Whispers even hinted at Marjorie's alleged involvement in the d ring, with authorities supposedly threatening her arrest if Townsend didn't cooperate. While this is part of Marjorie's history, it has cast a shadow over her marriage to Steve Harvey, with critics pointing to it as evidence of Steve's hypocrisy. Pair that with allegations of Steve's infidelity, especially in his past marriages, and it's a recipe for some serious scrutiny. With each passing revelation, Steve's life out of the spotlight appears darker, and he might be inching closer to losing his fan base. The big question now is whether more comedians will step forward, like Mark Curry, alleging theft from Steve, or if this will just be another passing storm. What are your thoughts on this ongoing saga? Drop a comment and we'll catch you in the next video.